Wait a second. So Baylor football still has to play a game this Saturday after the BYU game? This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, much to my surprise, and I'm not sure if my heart is ready for it, Baylor football plays again tomorrow, Saturday, against Texas State. I'm Drake Toll from Inside the Bears alongside Scotty Swingler. Please bear with him. Please, just do. Scotty's the Pigskin Preacher on Twitter, at Pig, Preacher Pigskin. Uh, thanks for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. And for the first time in like three years, we are not talking about the Baylor and BYU game, which we will certainly mention. But instead, we have Baylor and Texas State this week. It's just not a big game, Scotty. It's just not a big game. But it is, Drake. Huh. It certainly is. If- are you ready? I know. I, I don't even know if I am ready. I don't know if my heart is ready to play another football game after last week. Uh, I felt like both teams played two games. and may, But, hey, look, Appalachian State, you know, they're, they're, Texas State is not as good, but there are things that happen in college football that, that are insane and wild. So it could happen again this week. Baylor's got to be prepared. And speaking of prepared, you have prepared a message for us prior to Baylor's hopeful thwarting of Texas State and the Bobcats. I've done my best, and and just keep in mind, man. I, before I launch into this morning's sermon, that uh, this is like Texas State's kind of the perfect team to bounce back against after yeah. a game as emotional on the road as as this past week. Well, uh, Drake, this life is not guaranteed to be easy, man. In fact, often Scripture says the opposite. It's it, life is not supposed to be easy. Um, the other thing that we as Christians do not believe in. Uh, is karma. I preached that just a couple weeks ago to my students. We have a bad habit of saying, well, good things happen to good people, or, oh, you always get what you deserve. And you and I know from life experience, that ain't true. Good things happen to bad people. Sometimes, like Saturday, bad things happen to uh, good people. If, If bad things always happen to bad people, well, then TCU wouldn't win a single football game any season ever. But today, I want to uh, explore a book which many pastors shy away from, Drake, but we don't shy away from things here at Locked on Baylor. So open your Bibles, friends, to Revelation. Revelation. We're doing it, man. Yes, God. Hey, after Saturday, I figured we needed something awesome. Revelation chapter 2. Hey, a lot of people are scared of the book of Revelation, but I got to tell you, chapters 2 and 3, excellent insights. They are almost like mini letters to seven different churches in the region at the time of writing. And the first letter is to a church that a lot of Christians will be familiar with. It's the church of Ephesus. It's it's who Paul was writing to in the book of Ephesians. And, And he says something interesting to the church of Ephesus that I want to say to our Baylor Bears, but also, Drake, I gotta tell you, man, this sermon, this sermon's for you. So Revelation chapter two, I'm gonna start in verse one. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you can't tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claimed to be apostles but are not, and you found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet, I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Mm. Consider how far you have fallen. Mm. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Now, Drake, we, we want Baylor to be a lampstand. We want it to be a light that shines in the darkness, the city on the hill. And in order for it to be that way, we cannot abandon our first love. And so this week's three points from the Baptist preacher. Yes. First of all, Baylor, you got to get back to dominating on the offensive and defensive fronts. That is what ultimately was our marker and, and the thing that motivated success Last season, the offensive and defensive fronts dominating. I have not seen that two weeks in a row. Uh, I, I've been a little underwhelmed by the offensive line, to be quite frank. Uh, BYU 
had time to throw over and over and over. And I just want to see Gabe Hall swallow quarterbacks. We need to return to our first love offensively, defensively. Man, need the front, the big guys to step up. Baylor fans, second thing. How are some of y'all already bailing on Blake Shapin after one bad game? Uh, I just, I just cannot fathom this. I just cannot fathom that I saw real tweets from real Baylor fans in the past week that said, "Oh man, if this is me, just let's just get Kyron Jones in there." Let, I am just as excited about Kyron Jones as anybody. But Baylor fans, do not be so quick to abandon your first love. You have all been telling me for nine months that this guy is the guy, that he's the savior, that he is going to be incredible. Uh, let me remind you, and a bunch of people have drawn this comparison, this game is not too different when Baylor went to Stillwater last season. Right. And even just comparing the quarterbacks, Gary Bohannon in that game was 13 for 27 for 173 yards, whereas in this game against BYU, Shapin 18 for 28 for 137 yards. It wasn't a good game through the air, but it was a hostile road environment for a young team that, let's be honest, last season won a lot of close games. Last season was magical. We won a Big 12 championship, but it was close games, including against Texas State, where Baylor only won by nine points on the road against a very inferior opponent. Do not forget your first love. Blake Shapin bounces back this week. And third, and finally, mm. Drake, my brother in Christ, what is this tweet that I'm seeing from you asking BYU for a job? Oh, Drake, my brother in Christ, take the words to heart. Do not abandon. Do not forsake the love you had at first. Drake, you are a senior at the greatest university in the world. You have a base of people who listen to your podcast, who read your content, and who love you. This, Drake, is your first love. Come on, man. It was a rough Saturday. You were there. I wasn't there. I know it was awesome. The crowd was awesome. I've seen the videos. I've heard the testimony. But my man. It takes hard work and perseverance to get to the top and stay <sighs> at the top. And you've done it. Stick with it, man. Sick em bears. Stop tweeting at BYU for a job, Drake. Scotty, I drank the Kool-Aid, man. I drank I the Kool-Aid. <laughs> I went in there, blonde hair, blue eyes. I will say a third, no, two-thirds of my Twitter interaction over the course of the last month. I've never checked analytics, but I was like, I got to see. There's just no way this is normal. Two thirds happened the, over the course of three days because of BYU fans. They're rabid, man. They're rabid. Uh, I have blonde hair, blue eyes too. So I think that's kind of a factor in this. Um, they, yeah, look, it's a cool place. It is a really cool place. If I could get a job at Baylor after I graduate, if I haven't burned every bridge, then I will do it. I will certainly do it. <laughs> but that, that is a big if there, Scotty swinging over the pigskin preacher. Um, yeah, I, I liked that a lot of the focus was on last week in today's sermon as well. If I could give some, some you know, if I could come talk to the pastor post-sermon and, and yeah, let him know how I feel about the, the message. Um, first, excited for the potluck today. Going to be a lot of fun. And great message, especially honing in on BYU. And man, first love. That just hit home right there. Blake Shapin is still could very well be the answer. People are people are mean, man. It's not even like a like a... You know, hey, Shaman had a bad game. You know, uh, this hopefully he's better. It's like a he sucks. Start yeah. someone else. Fire Blake Shapin into the sun, which is just <laughs> this. Never, I don't think this happened with Gary Bohannon. It's just a weird. Maybe oh, there were there were a lot of people that were never happy with him either. But Drake, I mean, you've heard it before. It's a classic saying, and it's true. Every every fan base's favorite player is the backup quarterback. Yeah, because there's always some myth that that guy is just going to step in and be better. And on rare occasion, it has proven to be true. But those instances to me are few and far between. Hmm. Well, Scotty, I want to get your your thoughts on this week's game um, because, I mean, it should be a blowout. Let's hope at least. But first, I got to tell the folks at home about ooh, ooh, 
Underdog Fantasy, actually. Underdog Fantasy is something that I, this is the one I botched last week. Remember, guys, when I said host tells their personal anecdotes, and that was me? Uh, as you gear up for fall football season, everything going on right now, Underdog Fantasy is awesome. It's a really easy way to uh, go in, and it's like the, it is the easiest way to make college football season really exciting without losing money. Uh, emphasis on easy. You, you go in, there are, uh, you can win hard cash in single games. Underdog has investment backing from Mark Cuban, Kevin Durant, Adam Schefter. They've been focused on building superior products or fun user experience as well. Customer support team too. Like you can talk to an actual person at Underdog Fantasy. Um, and for me, being able to use Underdog the last couple of weeks, it's a lot less stressful than pure sports wagering. So I've seen a lot of success out of that side of Underdog Fantasy. Uh, it makes it more not only convenient, but also less stressful. Like, I feel a lot less anxious playing underdog fantasy and also put in your first hundred dollar deposit, get a hundred dollars free as well. So underdog fantasy, you got all kinds of pickums and different games go on. The pickums are probably my favorite because you can compete against other people. That's the easiest place to win money too while you watch college football. And it's a lot lower risk than just pure sports wagering underdog fantasy. Go visit them. Check them out right now on their app as well. Super easy and a hundred dollars free from your first $100. That is underdog fantasy go check them out scotty baylor and texas state this week texas state's not very good they're not um and and that's to be expected and this team shouldn't look too dissimilar than from what they did last year they are coming off a big win though drake they did blow out florida international last week uh 41 to 12 so this is going to be a, a game, um, at least right at kickoff, of mindset and mentality. You've got a team that is the underdog coming off a big win, maybe feeling good about themselves, but certainly knowing that Baylor's got more talent on the field. And you've got a team in Baylor that's back at home after a tough road loss in a game they probably should have won in multiple instances. And what is your mentality? What is your mindset coming into this game? Uh, and, and so I think right from kick, Baylor needs to come out aggressive, um, score quick, hit someone in the mouth. Texas State's running back uh, averaged 7.1 on the ground last week, ran for almost 200 oh. yards. Pop him in the mouth. Um, let's let's let uh, one of those linebackers or safeties hit him in the gap early. Hurt, uh, you know, not hurt him. Sorry, I almost said hurt him a little bit. But oh. <laughs> not hurt him, but you know, hit, make him feel make him feel what Baylor's defense is about here. And um, but yeah, should be should be a good bounce back game for the Bears. I would hope so. I uh, somebody, I'm gonna give it away. I had a, a buddy of mine. This happens sometimes where, I'll, transparent. We'll break the fourth wall a little bit, which we just we do because that's I'm, it's a podcast. We're talking to the people. That's right. Um, I people will, I will just come up and ask you like, hey, what do you think about the game this weekend? And I look, that's like a, a genuine question. They mean no malice by that. And every week, it's like, oh, it's going to be a great conversation about the game. This week, it's Texas State. Hey, man. Like, somebody walked up yesterday. Hey, man, you think we're going to win? What do you What do you want me to say? What do you think that I think? We're, it's Texas State. What do you want me to say? No. Why are you even asking me that? Just ask me that. You put on the bear head last week. I put on the bear head last week. And so I was like, yeah. it's. T- I, I shouldn't have had an ad- – I'm confessing to you since you're a preacher – I shouldn't have had the attitude that I had with him, but I gave him kind of a snarky, like, oh, it's Texas State, dude. Like, it's Texas State. And he said, well, you think Shapin's going to play better? What the? <laughs> Texas State! What yeah, I yeah, know? I would hope I would. so. <laughs> if he doesn't, we're really in trouble. Now, I'm the guy on Twitter saying, fire the coach if Shapin doesn't play better against Texas State. I uh, Again, the guy meant no malice. Nice guy. But I was like, wow. This should just be a game, and I think we're past the Liberty days, Baylor Liberty days of like, oh gosh, anybody could beat us. Now it is, all right, it's flipping Texas State. Go out there, pummel them by 35. In last year's game, 29-20 was gross, terrible. But after this game, I can only expect Baylor to come out with a vengeance. But the problem with that, Scotty, you know, what is one of the biggest killers to Christianity? Scotty, it's emotion. It's mm. emotion. It's not this. It's not a level-headedness. It's not true faith. It's being overcome with emotion. And if our guys come out there on Man, Saturday Drake, playing emotional football, that's scary to me. Drake, I'll get back to football in a second. But if you think emotion is the enemy of Christianity, you have been raised on some evangelical crap that I need you to walk <laughs> out of, brother. Be free. Man, David is the most emotional dude I've ever yeah. known. And he wrote the Psalms. And, like, dude. So, but... But you're right. You're right. And and 
players can get in their own heads, and fans are more fickle and emotional than anybody. And that's why they they would dare ask, well, are we going to win this week? Yes. Yes, we are. Um, I, I do think one of the interesting aspects of this is how we win. And I think people um, – First of all, let's acknowledge BYU is really good. Um, yeah. I saw – I didn't open the video, but I saw recommended to me on YouTube today. Either ESPN or Fox 1 was like, could BYU beat Alabama? Like that was a topic what? of conversation Why was this that? past week. Uh, um, and, and so like, people are good at it. Listen, so so they're, they're a good team. Uh, but I think what people want to see, we all decide that because we won a Madden game one time, we could be an offensive coordinator. And, and I don't know, and I don't know when people thought that being an offensive coordinator was as simple as clicking X and throwing the ball to you know the same receivers ten times in a game. Um, Jeff Grimes, he's really good at what he does. Yeah, and and uh, I understand that you can be frustrated about this situational kind of approach, um, but you work all week on a game plan, and. You can't just call what you want on the fly whenever you want. And, and I think what people want to see is uh, this offense look dynamic again and what it, what is the, what are the play designs and play call going to be. And I'm just going to disappoint you up front. Um, it's going to be vanilla. It's going to yeah. be a lot of what, it's going to be a lot of what we did week one. It's going to be a lot of zone, you know, zone running and a couple play action throws, some throws over the middle. I mean, that's that's what it's going to be. Um but I think if you see the Baylor bounce back, fans are fickle. If Baylor bounces back and wins this game by 30 or 40, um, may not. But if they do, I think everyone's happy again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, there needs to be a statement. Not needs for the team wise. I, those guys should go out and win by 17 and still be like, all right, it's 34 to 17. That's what, you know, who cares? We, we won the game by a lot. Fans, I think, would look at that and be like, oh my gosh, uh, the world's falling. Because that's what fans are supposed to do. Not that this is a need to win this game by a lot, but conf any confidence boost would be big for a team that's pretty down after last week. Scotty, uh, final score prediction in this one. You know, I'll say like 45 to 12. Okay. Yeah. But let me, one more, one more word on that idea of scores and like beating bad teams. I just want to real quick look through last year's schedule and reminder, like give everybody some perspective. Last year, Baylor beat Texas State by nine. Yeah, Baylor yeah. beat Iowa State by two. Uh, Baylor beat Texas by a touchdown. And we rag on how bad Texas was last year. They didn't make a bowl game. Baylor beat them by a touchdown. Lost to a bad TCU team on the road. Beat Texas Tech by three. I mean, it was a magical Big 12 championship season. But there's a lot of close football games in there against teams you probably should have beaten by more. So you take the loss in non-conference. Win this game big, move into conference with more confidence. I like it. Scotty, the only other game we're going to pick today. Uh, I'm ready. B BYU plays at Oregon. And boy, howdy. We had an influx of BYU fans. I have never. I was tell I told you the, the interaction with BYU fans has been great. Uh, I was looking at on YouTube, too. I Again, not a big analytics guy, but I was like, let's just see if these are BYU fans that are just flooding you know, Twitter and Instagram and everything. And our most popular location on YouTube this week, Provo, Utah. They're all out there. <laughs> They're all listening. So to feed that beast, Scotty, Oregon and BYU in Eugene this week. BYU three-point dogs. What do you see in that one? Man, if 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 I were a betting man, and I'm not Drake because I'm a Baptist, and yeah. uh, you know, you did a betting ad on my segment last week, which I just thought was brilliant by you. I would bet on the Cougars. I would, man. They looked good last week, and, and Oregon to me, overrated, man. Overrated. Give me the Cougs. I concur, especially after Bo Nix. Uh, was just bad throw picks as they call him. Ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> Scotty, my pick. Give me the BYU Cougars. Look at him. Do not yeah, I, forsake yeah. your first love, Drake. Don't do it, man. Sick him. Sick him. Give me the give me the Cougars. I have my uh, my Bam Bams. Uh, I don't know if that's appropriate to say. My Bam Bams that say "Go Cougs" on them. I got them at the game. They don't make a lot. Of, they don't make a lot of noise. They're pretty. They're like they're very religious. They're very tame for Bam Bams. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, give me the Cougars this week. That's for all the BYU folks out there. Scotty, thanks for joining. As always, folks want to find you and your content. Really good game day content, by the way. Where can they go? 
Uh, at Preacher Pigskin is tw- on Twitter is where I'm most active at the moment. Would love to see you there. Ka-chow. I love it. Scotty, thanks so much as always. Get you out of here and tell the folks at home about LinkedIn Talent Solutions. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Talent Solutions. As you get up for fall, you need the right people on your team. This is like, you ever heard of uh, of cuffing season? That's what the kids say nowadays. Uh, it's in regards to like dating. Um, dating's not popular in the summer for college kids or high schoolers. They don't want to, they don't want to date. They would rather just like have a fun summer. Then the cold weather hits. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I need somebody to cuddle with for Halloween. That's what LinkedIn job solutions is basically like How fall comes around. You, you need somebody on your staff, not to cuddle with, but to work for you. LinkedIn job solutions is super easy. 810 million people have used it. That's like a eighth of the world have used this. That's wild. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame. Uh, you'll find the right people to hire. Simple tools, screening questions, make it easy to focus on candidates that you want. Small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one, numero uh, in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. And every week, 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Post your job free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right. College football this week. Every Friday, we break it out and give you some picks and thoughts and jazz from across the nation. How about last week? We have not mentioned, I'll, like again, fourth wall. It's it's Friday. Happy Friday. Um, we have not talked a lot about how Texas A&M lost. We have not talked a lot about how Notre Dame lost. There was a lot that happened in college football on Saturday. And maybe Baylor losing to BYU is a product of God saying, this is the week where nothing ever makes sense and everyone loses. We are dangerously close to as far as just the open of the season goes to being in 2007 territory. We're, we're definitely on a 2007 trajectory right now. Um, even though everything's top heavy, had Bama lost, we would have really been right there. Number one team going down on, on week two. So we are in a scenario where and Texas lost and is ranked now. How many teams lose a game? And they're like, yeah, we'll rank you. Not, not that they don't deserve it. They played really, really well against Alabama, be transparent. Um, but just nuts. It doesn't happen very often in college athletics. Across the NCAA this week and the Big 12, a couple of the top 25 games that I am looking at, Georgia, South Carolina, Georgia, 24 and a half point favorites. Not so fast. 24 and a half in a rivalry game. I like South Carolina. I'll have my eyes glued to that one, 11 a.m. too. So things always go weird at 11 a.m. It feels like. And I like Georgia in in that one to win, obviously, but South Carolina to cover. Oklahoma at Nebraska. OU favored by 11, over under 66. I love the under in this one. Nebraska without Scott Frost. They just fired their head coach. But I also love, I may even parlay it. I love Nebraska plus 11. Drake, why do you love Nebraska plus 11? Well, thank you for asking. TCU Baylor last year. TCU fired Gary Patterson. They beat Baylor at home. It made zero sense. It shouldn't have happened. It made zero, zero sense. Not to say Nebraska's going to win this game, but they're at least going to keep it close against OU. Their guys are playing with a vengeance without their fearless, former fearless, he wasn't fearless, without Scott Frost. Uh, the game, another 11 a.m. game on the docket, Texas State at Baylor. Baylor, 30-point favorites. It opened at 31 and a half. It's now 30, so Vegas really likes Texas State in this one. Over under a 53 as well. I think the Bears win this one. Do they cover is a big question, 30 points. I'm going to lay off of it. I think Baylor could win by 28, and folks would be happy. Rand would be happy. I don't think they come out with a with a huge vengeance and just maul these guys uh, more than 35 points. So that's why I'm probably going to lay off of it. Uh, I think Texas State's just not that bad of a football team. One and one this season. The Bobcats are much better than they were last year, and Baylor only beat them by nine. They beat FIU 41 to 12, although they did lose at Nevada 38 to 14. So they're still not a very good football team. Um, so give me Baylor in that one, but I don't know if they cover a layoff of that. BYU, Oregon. I love BYU on the road in this one. I think Jaron Hall is just that good of a quarterback. Throw picks. The quarterback for Oregon is just not that good. I used to know his girlfriend's roommate. Uh, still know her. I mean, she's alive. We just don't really talk anymore. So inside our baseball, they're going to lose. Also, BYU has the belt. You ever heard of the belt? Let me tell you about the belt. Dating back to the very first college football game of all time, where Rutgers won, by the way, it's a fun fact, there is a line of succession of teams that won past that. Like, I think it's Navy beat Rutgers, and then Navy lost to Notre Dame. And so the belt is the lineage from the very first college football game of all time on and on and on through the years. And 
teams, random teams, like Assumption College, have had the belt over the course of time. At one point, it flew through the Mountain West, where it was like Colorado State and San Diego State and Fresno State were tossing it around week after week. And then Arizona beats one of those teams, and they grab the belt. And it goes around the Pac-12, and then one of them loses in a bowl game to Pitt. And then the ACC's got it. Well, did you know the belt was given to the Alabama Crimson Tide not too long ago? And, of course, they're going to keep it for a while. They've been winning. This was last season. Then they lost to Texas A&M. They lost the belt. The lineage that dates all the way back to the beginning of college football, Alabama had it, and they lost it to Texas A&M. The Aggies got it. Well, they lost to Ole Miss. Yeah, they did. Ole Miss had the belt. Ole Miss lost the Sugar Bowl to the Baylor Bears. Baylor came into the 2022 college football season with the belt, carrying on the they they took the the lineage the streak the win from the first ever college football game and had that it all in line to themselves until last week that's right the belt was given to the BYU Cougars after they beat the Baylor Bears. They have the win streak that carries over to that Rutgers win on a fateful day in the 1800s. However, you probably didn't even know it, but Baylor had it coming into the season, and we didn't cherish it as well as we should have because oh, how coveted is that? That's an unbelievable piece of history that all those wins have led up to you, and they gave it away at BYU. So BYU has it against Oregon. They're not going to give it away to Oregon, hopefully at least. We need BYU to hold on to it as long as possible so that we can get it back or it can stay around the Big 12 so we have a chance to get it back. Ole Miss, Georgia Tech, at Georgia Tech, Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. Ole Miss wins. Minus 16.5 feels kind of heavy. Georgia Tech's not good. Minus 16.5 still feels kind of heavy. I'm a layoff. Penn State at Auburn. Penn State three-point favorites. I like it. I still I just don't think this Auburn team is very good. I think they're 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 going to start losing games pretty soon, starting with this one. James Franklin. UL Monroe at Alabama. You know how that's going to go. Liberty and Wake Forest. No more Charlie Brewer. Wake Forest is going to roll in that one. Minus 16 and a half, and I like it. Give me a Wake Forest. Ohio State's at home against Toledo. Well, here's here's an interesting nugget. They're favored by 32. You're thinking Baylor's only favored by 30? Yeah, Ohio State's only favored by 32 against Toledo. Toledo's not a bad football team by any means. They're a pretty solid football team out of the out of the MAC. Uh, I just it's Ohio State, like number three team in the country, only favored by 32 points against a group of five team. So don't be too upset with Baylor's line this week. Arkansas, Missouri State, that's a fun one to watch. Bobby Petrino, Bobby Petrino, head coach of Missouri State. He was the head coach of Arkansas until hot motorcycle. Akron, Tennessee, no. It is a big one. A couple big ones in a row. NC State and Texas Tech. NC State at home, number 16 in the country against unranked Texas Tech, favored by 10. I don't know if they cover, but they win the game. I don't think Texas Tech goes on the road and wins this one. Again, similar situation. I predicted this in our preseason. Texas Tech wins a couple, and they go on a, a pretty hefty losing streak here for a while. Maybe even lose to Kansas at this point as well as Kansas is playing. So I've got NC State winning that game by 10. Maybe not, but they win that game. Michigan State, Road Dogs. Number 11 team in the country, Road Dogs at Washington, who's favored by 3.5 on Saturday at 6.30 p.m. on ABC. Give me Sparty. Sparty upsets Washington. I, I just don't know why Washington's favored. I don't think that they're very good. Uh, UTSA at Texas. Texas minus 12 and a half at home. I like UTSA to cover. I really do. I think Texas comes in really emotional after a big win that was a loss. And somehow, surely they find a way to either win this game close or maybe even lose the game to UTSA. Texas A&M then and Miami. A&M, six-point favorites at home against Miami. After losing to App State, yeah, the team's got to come back pretty charged. Miami, they're not bad at all. I think Miami is a good football team, but A&M, if they lose this game, if they lose this game, holy crap. Like, that is, that uh, Jimbo Fisher's seat is flaming. 44-point over-under, too. So not a lot of confidence in Texas A&M's offense. They didn't look very good against Sam Houston State either. In this game, give me the... Uh, Give me Miami. Texas a and just not very good this year on, on offense at all. They didn't throw for 100 yards. They didn't run for 100 yards on Saturday. That's bad. They didn't have 200 yards of offense. That's bad. They're going to lose to Miami at home this week, and all comes crumb all comes crumbling down. And then USC by 12 at home against Fresno State. I like that one. USC looks really good now. Gosh dang it. Sucks, but it is what it is. All right. Coming up. Monday, we'll recap Baylor and Texas State. I got a flight to Seattle this weekend, so I won't be there, but Cameron Stewart will. So follow him on Twitter for all the live game updates. I got a wedding to go to. Wedding to during football team. This has been, always will be. Come back on Monday. Subscribe, by the way. We're almost at 1,000. We're not almost. We're close enough. Locked on Baylor.